Hi there, I'm Alok, a developer advocate here at Google Cloud. Today, we're going to talk about how to supercharge your productivity with AI First Colab, a true coding partner in your notebook, allowing you to unlock data science, machine learning, and AI workflows with unprecedented scale and ease. To show you how it works, I'll take you through a fun data analysis exercise. Think of Colab as your Jupyter Notebook in the cloud hosted by Google. The best part, there's zero setup required and you can use strong computing resources like GPUs and TPUs for free. Notebooks run in the browser and can be shared with other users to collaborate on via Google Drive. Colab is especially well suited to data analysis, machine learning, and generative AI, and is very popular in the education and research communities. Colab has been reimagined to be AI first with an agentic collaborator that's designed to help you tackle your most challenging problems faster than ever. Powered by Gemini, AI First Colab enables you to perform your entire data science workflow through natural language. The AI companion operates across your entire notebook, understanding your code and the state of your data at each step, along with what you're looking to accomplish. This is an iterative and collaborative experience. You issue short commands and follow-ups and can even change your mind mid-conversation. You are truly working with the agent. Being able to interact with code, data, models, and outputs in this way significantly lowers barriers for anyone looking for insights from their data. Let's see how easy it is to get started with a demo. I'm going to use this ice cream products data set from Kaggle as the starting point. It contains information about 241 ice cream flavors across four brands, along with more than 21,000 total reviews of those products. I've downloaded that data into my Google Drive, as you can see here. Now I'm going to create a new notebook by going to colab.google.com and selecting the new notebook option at the bottom left. This opens up an empty Colab notebook in a new tab. You'll see this toolbar at the bottom asking, what can I help you build? That is where you can start interacting with Gemini to help you on your journey. My first prompt is, can you analyze the ice cream products and reviews data from the ice cream data folder in my Google Drive? It starts working and eventually comes up with a plan. Once I see the plan, I'm going to move the conversation with Gemini over to the side panel so I can read the whole thing. Okay, so mount Google Drive, load data, analyze the data, visualize findings, reasonable enough. I'm going to go ahead and click run step-by-step step, and you can see Gemini is going to start executing the plan that it had generated. First, we see it generates the code for mounting Google Drive, which looks good, so I click accept and run. As it runs, it's going to take me through a series of authorization screens, which allow Colab to have access to my drive. I'm comfortable with doing that in this case, so I click through all of them. Then, it takes a few moments to mount all of my Google Drive into the notebook environment. After that, Colab will have direct access to the ice cream data that I want to analyze without me having to upload it. You'll see that Gemini continues to work writing the code to upload the two CSV files in the ice cream data folder, products and reviews. I'll run that and we'll quickly see the two data frames loaded in. The first data frame is up here with product info, including name, description, rating, and ingredients. The second one has one row per review, including author, title, votes on whether each review was helpful or not, and the actual review text for 21,000 plus reviews. Gemini has suggested some next steps for analysis, but I'm going to give it more direction based on where I want it to go. In this case, I'll prompt it to filter to reviews that were a net positive in helpfulness, and then calculate total number of ratings and average star ratings by product from those helpful reviews. The idea here is that I only want to include ratings from reviews that others found helpful in my analysis. Once it generates the code for those steps, I take a quick look at it and go ahead and allow it to run. The codes executes as I expected to, filtering down and then outputting the number of helpful ratings and average stars by product, all without me having to remember exact Python syntax for these common data manipulation tasks. Now, to get closer to the output I'm looking for, I'm going to ask Gemini to limit down the products with at least 25 ratings, sort by average star ratings and then total number of ratings, and add in brands, product names, and descriptions from the product data. It generates the code to do that, and I'm feeling pretty good, so I let it run. Gemini was able to figure out how to properly merge the product's data with the average star ratings, so the results show some ice creams with perfect 5.0 average ratings, complete with their brands, names, and descriptions. Now let's move on to another key step in the data science process, visualization. I'm going to prompt Gemini to make an interactive scatter plot of the average ratings versus the number of ratings for the products in my last data frame. 
It creates the code using a plotting library known as Altair, which I go ahead and run. Then it generates the exact type of scatter plot I had in mind, with the ability to hover over each point to see which product it represents. I like this interactive plot a bunch and want to save it off to share with my stakeholders. So then I simply ask Gemini to save off the scatter plot as an HTML file. This time, you'll see that Gemini actually modifies the code cell to save off the plot right after it's generated. Once I rerun, we can go ahead and confirm that the plot has been saved off in my files pane from where I could download it and use it as I wish. The last thing I want to do is to show some images for those top rated ice creams from my analysis along with their info. I provide Gemini with some instructions about what I want and where the image files live. This time it comes back with a five step plan to get the images and display them as I asked in the notebook. I'm gaining confidence in my AI companion so I'll go ahead and accept an auto run this time. It's going to take a few moments to prepare but then you'll see it proceed step by step through identifying those top five products. Those are the ones with the 5.0 average ratings along with their names and descriptions. It's going to construct the image file path. So it's gonna go in and find which is the right image for each of those products using the, the product key to make that determination with the file name. It's going to verify the image files for the top five products. So it looks like it finds them for four out of the five. And then as it goes to display the product information, it hits an error, oh no. But the agent keeps working and actually fixes its own error before we can even see what happened. We get our images displayed along with names, ratings, and descriptions for each product, just as we asked. So to recap, I went from an empty collab to a full-fledged analysis, interactive visualization, and images of ice cream products that I wanna buy in just a few minutes. And that's all done in our notebook without having to write a single line of code ourselves. This is just the beginning of what you can do with AI First Collab. We'll explore how the companion can supercharge other workflows like end-to-end -end machine learning and using generative AI APIs in future demos. To get started today, simply open any new or existing notebook in Collab, look for the Gemini Spark icon in the bottom toolbar, and start interacting with your AI coding partner using natural language. I can't wait to see how AI First Collab transforms your data science and machine learning journeys. Happy coding!